Welcome to Indisputable. We got a lot of show today. We got a lot on the agenda. Breaking down news of the day, we got the big homie Wozni Lombre, host of Wozni at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesdays on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash TYT, host of Woke Bros and writer at The Ringer. And also in the bullpen, we have back Christian Watson, spokesperson for Color Us United and host of the Pensive Politics podcast. We're gonna talk about race in America. Well, race in America is front and center. We just got a front row seat into the reality of the two justice system in the United States of America. Kyle Rittenhouse has been found not guilty of all charges. Jurors in Kenosha, Wisconsin on Friday declared Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty on all counts, capping off an intense trial surrounding the deadly unrest in that city last year, Rittenhouse, 18 years of age, would have faced a mandatory life sentence if found guilty and convicted of first degree intentional homicide as he should have been. Uh, the verdict came on the fourth day of deliberations. Um, this was the 15th day of the trial. Do we have that verdict? The defendant will rise and face the jury and hearken to its verdicts. State of Wisconsin versus Kyle as to the first count of the information, Joseph Rosenbaum, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the second count of the information, Richard McGinnis, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the third count of the information, unknown male, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the fourth count of the information, Anthony Huber, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. As to the fifth count of the information, Gage Grosskreutz, we the jury find the defendant Kyle H. Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. Members of the jury, are these your unanimous verdicts? Is there anyone who does not agree with the verdicts as read? No. Would you wish the jury pulled? Let me help you understand something because I know many will moralize on this and say this is exactly what the protesters deserved because Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself. Let me be very clear, Kyle Rittenhouse in my book is a killer and he committed cold blooded murder. He has been found not guilty by a court of law. My opinion still stands, period. So let me be very clear. Because we, we want to highlight the unequal ap application of the law. You mean to tell me that if a black man travels to another state in order to insert himself into a contentious situation, a protest if you would, let's say a Trump rally or a pro-Trump protest, black man goes there in order to protect property he has not been asked to protect. Nobody called for him, nobody was checking for him, nobody gave him authority. He's not a security guard, he's not an off duty police officer. He just goes there with a gun. He gets a gun illegally. The person that gave him the gun illegally gets charged with two felonies. He has an illegal weapon or he is unlawfully carrying a gun in a state that he should not even be in. And he takes this gun and 15 days before he commits murder, he says he's going or would like to kill a person coming out of a store. He said that it's on video, that was not allowed in this trial. The jury members did not get to see that piece of information. It does go to state of mind. So all of this can happen and then you can be the person with the gun. You think a black person with a gun that's not supposed to be in possession of the gun can go and kill people at a protest in another state be the aggressor, folks try to disarm him and he claims self defense after he kills two and tries to kill a third. Do you really think that happens for a black man and he's found not guilty in a court? Do you really think so? This is a miscarriage of justice in my opinion. Kyle Rittenhouse is a cold blooded killer in my opinion and this as I said many times on this show before, this does not surprise me. If you've been watching Indisputable, I have said right here on this program, I believe Kyle Rittenhouse will be found not guilty. 
Not because I think he's not guilty, but because I know the criminal justice system he's involved with. The prosecutor had a hell of a job. He had two defense attorneys to go against, one sitting next to Kyle Rittenhouse and the other one sitting in front of Kyle Rittenhouse in a black robe. Kyle Rittenhouse got every break imaginable inside of a courtroom. The judge even sung a song to him in front of the jury, made every ruling in his favor when the judge had discretion to do so. Dropped the charge that was clearly, clearly against the law for him to be 17 with a dangerous weapon in Wisconsin. The judge threw that one out. That's the one probably was not even debatable by the jury. Big Waz, what are your thoughts here? Man, it's it's tough. Um, you know, I'm watching a show on a Hulu. It's called Dope Sick. It's about the opium epidemic. And you know, very early on in the show, they basically explained to you that the FDA had put a special label on Oxycontin, which allowed the Purdue Pharma to sell it and say, unlike every single opioid that has ever existed, Oxycontin is safe. The FDA did that, that's a government institution. Um, And then, you know, I watch people be vaccine hesitant as people be like, well, the FDA said it's okay. Well, you know, the integrity is lost in the FDA. And so how are people supposed to believe it? So I think about here in the justice system, um, how are people supposed to believe in this thing? It feels like there's no integrity, you know, um, you can't blame people then when they go out and feel like, I'm not gonna get a fair shake from the law, especially if you're black, especially if you're Latin, especially if you're from you know marginalized groups. I think about how the trust gets eroded over time and the consequences of that. Um, it's tough, this is how, this is why people don't believe. Yeah. I said something on the show a few days ago about Michael Flynn, right? General Michael Flynn, the man who is corrupt, admitted to being corrupt and then got pardoned for his corruption. Michael Flynn is on this tour with QAnon where he's going around telling people that the word of God or our Christian religion should be the actual law, okay? And I told you this was going to happen where they were going to dangle a carrot in front of the base of the Republican Party and tell them if you vote us in, we will bring this religious order to the United States of America. Now, here's how it connects to Kyle Rittenhouse and everything else. If you can successfully do that, you can justify anything in the name of your God. You can justify doing anything in the name of your religion. I had another story this week where a judge let a serial rapist go because the judge said on the record, I prayed on this. And it is not going to do any good to lock this person up and provided no additional explanation because in his world, his religion trumps everything, no pun intended. Now you have another guy running for Congress, he's a pastor. Here's what he said. I'm excited about the growing movement, especially here in the fourth district of South Carolina, of people who are identifying themselves as just Christian conservatives. Right, we gotta take it back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe the people here at the fourth district of South Carolina are getting that. It's not just about being Republicans, it's about being a conservative Christian who believes this is a Christian nation and any policy that is contrary to the word of God, we need to remove it from uh, from, 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 the, from, the, from our, uh, 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 from mainstream America and make it illegal. <laughs> you wanna remove it? From mainstream America, you want to remove secularism from mainstream America. Mainstream America was founded on the principles of secularism. The people who founded the nation were literally running from guys like you. From religious persecution from people like you. They wanted a secular government. They wanted a separation between faith and government. They wanted a freedom to be applied to the expression of religion. 
They wanted the government not to pass laws that would abridge the expression of religion. What country are you talking about, sir? This clown is running for Congress in South Carolina, Mark Burns. That's his name. I got more. I got more on this cat, okay? I told you this is going to start happening. I said this on Indisputable. They are going to start dangling this carrot in front of their base. This is the new red meat. They're bringing religious order. Some of the most corrupt people on the planet, by the way. They are bringing religious clarity. This country was not founded on the principles of Christianity. This is not a Christian country. Those many of those who founded this nation were actually deist. But this preacher would have a hard time living up to a theocracy in the first place. Remember the lies he told? Here's some of them. I did without question say that um, I had crossed, and I'm not crossed, but I had started the process um, of, 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 the, of being a part of that organization. Um, but that's the fathers that I've gotten. Is that the bio from your website? It is, but it is not the, it is the bio, but this is not an accurate depiction of the bio. I mean, okay. information has obviously been added. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I own up to any mistakes that I've made like I did with my tweet, but obviously in this case, that's not. That's so this not. is not from your page? No, this is from my page, but what I'm saying is, obviously this has been manipulated or either, or either, either hacked or added. Yeah, that's not even the big lie, okay? So he lied about what group he was a part of, all right? Wanting to be a big shot. Here's what else he lied about. You also claimed that you served six years in the Army Reserves. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. Okay, we called the Army and they said that you had no active Army or I was Army never Reserve part of Service. The, no, no, I wasn't part of the, the South Carolina National Guard. Okay, I just asked you about Army Reserves. That was my question. You, in, in this bio, claimed six years in the Army Reserves. Which is, it is reserves. It is the Army, the Army of South Carolina National Guard is reserves. In a statement to CNN, the U.S. Army says Burns served in the South Carolina National Guard from 2001 to 2005, was discharged in 2008. He has no active Army or Army Reserve service time. And he wants a God regime in the United States of America. See, I'm bringing this up because these guys are charlatans. They're fake, they're phony, they're manipulating the masses and they're utilizing religion to do so. But I wanna bring you back to reality. If you follow this cat, if you follow this guy, remember who he is. Here's more. Did you attend North Greenville University? I did attend North Greenville University. Did you graduate from North Greenville University? No, I didn't complete the degree at North Greenville University. In fact, the university tells CNN he was here one semester. Again, the bio that's on your website claims that you, you earned a Bachelor of Science degree. Did you make that claim? I asked you just a moment ago as we were just opening up this. And first of all, I said that we were off the record. I didn't okay. agree to that. Yeah, but I did. I did. And, we're and still rolling. I'm still asking you questions on the record. Did you, I'm off did the you make that claim that you I'm graduated from North Because Greenville I think University. this is not fair that you, you, this is not fair at all. This is not what I agreed to. I thought we were doing a profile and all of a sudden you're here to I'm, try to destroy my I'm not, character. I'm not. You destroyed your damn self, preacher. Telling all those tall tales, long lies. And now this hardcore Trump supporter wants to be the new congressman out of South Carolina. Uh, Big Waz, what do you think of guys like this? I actually um, wanna go the other way. I wanna lean into this Christianity as doctrine, as law, um, you know, cuz love your neighbor. You know, mm. <laughs> let he who is without sin cast the first stone, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, feed, feed the sick. Um, feed the hungry. Heal the sick. <laughs> like, let's do it. <laughs> like, if you, if we really want to go there, let's do it. Let's actually practice the preachings of the book. You know, <laughs> Look, we can be selective if we want, but I, I know what book I read. <laughs> yeah. I know what it's about. It's about washing the feet of the homeless. Yep. That's who Jesus was hanging out with. Is helping the people who are disenfranchised. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's be yeah. let's be great Christians. They couldn't live up to any of that, brother. And you know it. <laughs> uh, because they simply want to utilize 
uh, their faith context as a methodology to gain political power. That's all it is for them. It is not about a people's value system as it is for you and I. All right, there's a guy who had his hands up, okay? It's a teenager. And he was still shot and killed. He was going through a mental health crisis. New footage has been released that shows a teenager shot by a police officer, had his hands up in the air for 14 seconds. 14 seconds, and it wasn't even a gun. It wasn't a real gun. Christian Hall was standing on the ledge of an interstate and what appears to be a suicidal mental condition. Here is how the cops discovered him. Let's go to video. Sorry, that's the balance on right now. Zoomed in. Can you step down and talk to us? You're not in any trouble. You're not in any trouble. Come on, man. You're not in any trouble. Can you get up? Just step off for us, man. Come on. What do you got in your hand? Just get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. He's got something in his hand. In his left hand. Okay, so the troopers started to react when they saw what they thought to be a gun. It's not a gun, it's actually a pellet gun, okay? It's not a real gun. Uh, here's the next video. We got a gun, 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 hey! Here he goes. Oh, there's the gun. Oh. He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. You see this? He, he started waving the gun out by his hip. What's he like? Oh, don't just screw him. Put it down, that gun down. Put it down. CJ, put it down. Put it down. Put it down now, CJ. Put it down. There's more video, it's very graphic. I wanna remind you that in the newness of policing or at least police reform advocates would say in this situation, at least one person needs to be trained on how to deal with a mental health patient or someone who is going through a mental health episode. The young man, a teenager was suicidal going through these phases. These cops decided to do this, here it is. Put it down. Put it down now, CJ. Put it down. Put it down. Drop it. Drop it. Drop the gun. Put it down. Drop it. Put it down now. We have to drop it. The cops were, were in no danger, no danger at all. The hands were up in the air. Now think about the irony here. You're responding to a suicide call and it ends up you killing them. Without the person ever pointing any weapon at you whatsoever, the cop, the cops kill them. Responding to a suicide call. Let's put up a picture of the deceased Christian Hall with his father uh, and mom, yeah, okay. Christian Hall was 19, had been diagnosed with depression, was standing on the ledge of a highway overpass near Stroudsburg in Northeastern Pennsylvania. When troopers arrived, they tried to persuade him to get down, but when they saw he had a gun, later determined it to be 
a realistic Pelagon, they backed away. All right, so we got the video now. We see what happened here. My point is this, there are so many things that could have been done here to show that we have a human response to individual humans in this country. His hands were up. You won't change that fact. Nobody was in danger. You will not change that fact. He did not point a gun at someone that was fake, but somebody else thought it was real. He pointed nothing in the direction of anyone. That's a fact you cannot change. And he's dead, that's another fact you cannot change. Um, Hall's parents, they have started the process of suing both uh, the troopers that shot him, um, as well as the department. Um, we are going to continue to follow this story. Waz, what are your thoughts here? These op- officers were clearly out of their depth, you know. Um, that's why I feel bad for this young man. Like, there was nobody out there to help him. It's tough. Like, <laughs> these guys clearly had no idea what to do, and they were panicked, they were scared. They shouldn't have been there, you know. Um, but you mentioned at the top of the segment about hopefully having a mental health expert on the scene. Like these guys is just they're cowboys. It's awful. Yeah, it's horrible. All right, we got more on the other side is indisputable. Stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We still got a lot of show left. Let me remind everyone, um, live today we got attorney, community organizer, and candidate for US Senate, Morgan Hopper joins the Young Turks Power Panel, okay? That's going to be hot, hot, hot. You don't wanna miss it, tune in live at 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time, tyt.com forward slash live, all right? Going to be a big one. Also on the power panel. we got John, we got Jank, Morgan Harper, hour one. JR, Jank, and Jackson White, hour two. Boom. That's how that's how you bring in a Friday. That's how you bring in a weekend. All right. Also, Galaxy Brain with the big homie Ben Carollo, right after Indisputable. That's a Twitch exclusive. Twitch.tv forward slash TYT to catch the all new episode. All right. All right, let's get it. A lot of great comments. Uh, Mickey C, the silver hair dragon. Rittenhouse's verdict just gave white supremacists domestic terrorists permission to attend protests heavily armed. They can and will instigate trouble, then can now shoot those who react and claim self defense. That is basically the linear logic. You are right. Uh, Lynn says militia recruitment just shot up. Mm-hmm. Cray Cray Souffle says Rittenhouse will be found uh, guilty in civil suits. Bring them, bring them on quick because this murderer deserves to be destroyed financially. Uh, Matthew lying about earning a BS when he is showing us he is full of BS. <laughs> he had a BS degree, all right. Yeah. Uh, Bernie's effing mittens. Uh, how did the guy that gave Kyle the gun get busted and Kyle gets nothing? I tried to explain this to a student of mine, right? Because I had one of my college students reach out <laughs> right after the verdict and said, Doc, explain this to me. And had the same question you had. And I said, listen, I don't have an answer for that. Because it's like buying a kilo of cocaine and only the person who sold you the cocaine goes to jail. Get what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. Okay. Uh, Dizzy by nature says 28 US Code subsection 144, bias or prejudice of judge. Yeah, Bernie the Kiwi Dragon, uh, this miscarriage of justice is why we need to keep speaking truth to power, Doc. Some may question the value of speaking out, but the alternative is to remain silent. We cannot accept that, agreed. Jet Tet says, we're witnessing the death throes of white supremacy. It will get worse before it gets better. I do agree with you on that. That's why you see so much action and reaction because it's coming to its final quarter. Agreed. Twitch, um, Cinderessa says, Kyle is not ready to start his career in law enforcement. He's already passed the interview and test. Maybe he's going to Congress. 
because Matt Gates offered him a job. Nina 731, uh, I can't stand this, so mad and angry right now, so depressing. I cannot watch this BS, but I need you to keep watching because we need you to know what's happening, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a In Sunday? You're I feel great, back off! I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Don't leave this parking lot. I want you to call the police. No, the cops will be here in a minute. You're f rude. You're f rude. We're at Jack in the Box. We ordered some food and our food is cold. And this is the behavior that we are getting from the employees. They said if you don't leave, they go to We are right, Johnny. We are calling now. And I'm not leaving until I get my money back. Okay, that's fine. You just call me an idiot. Like who? Like who? You just call me an idiot. Well, you know what? You insulted us. And you was all type of foul language, like you just disrespectful for no reason. Not one person would disrespect you the whole entire time. I want my money back. Please give me my money back. This just call me an idiot. You think it'd be nice to you now? Please you give me my money back. You were acting like. Here. I thought you were acting like. Right. You, right. you, right. you, right. you called me a home. It doesn't no. matter. It doesn't matter. The customer is always right. Don't you? Didn't you take customer service? Don't you know what customer oh, service is? You're not. I'm sorry, uh, oh, sorry. I'm not a customer? Okay, I just gave you money and I want my back now. Why are you trying to use foul language? Like, what is wrong with you? Like, what is your problem? Like, this jack in the box and the previous jack in the box that I was just at. Apparently, y'all don't know how to do your goddamn jobs. Don't you go to the other jack in the box, man, and get on the jack in the box. I'm going to tell you, you made your food fresh. This you did not make this my food fresh. This made your food Those fries are cold. And I'm not moving until I get a feet. I want my money back. They're rude. They're ignorant. My food is cold. I'm this. I've been recording this whole thing. I want my back now. Come on inside and talk. Please. I don't need to come inside. Come I got the police on the phone right now. Well, first of all, had they not been rude to us to begin with, we wouldn't have been cussing and rude and that to your minors. They were, they were rude to us. I asked for my money back. I should be able to get my money back. I'm an unhappy customer. It's not an emergency, this is a non-emergency line, but I'm at Jack in the Box right now, and we're having an issue to where um, our food is cold, and they won't give me my money back. Okay, do you want an officer? Oh, uh, we don't know yet. Um, I don't know yet. They're, they're just very rude here. This is the second in the box I've been to today. Graham, do you want an officer? No. Okay, so you don't need a police? No. Okay, have a good day. Believe it or not, I actually have more. She called the police because her fries were cold. Ladies and gentlemen, I actually think we have a Karen of the year. <laughs> I, got, I know it's early to make that call. I know it's early to make that call. We're just in November, we still got a month and a half left. But I would dare say, we have seen the threats of Karenicity. We have seen them threaten to call the police over really ridiculous things. This one actually did and spoke to an emergency operator about her cold fries and did not lie about why she was calling. I mean, this is an OG Karen. She said, hey, I'm calling because my fries are cold and they are rude. First of all, you're a jack in the box lady. <laughs> you're a jack in the damn box. You got kids in high school, you got college students. Okay, this is not a five star restaurant, it's a fast food restaurant. It is what it is. Sometimes your food is cold, you can request a redo or just eat them cold ass fries. I have never heard of anyone calling 911 on cold fries and then having a conversation. <laughs> like that should be against the law actually. Like ma'am, you just wasted time on a 911 emergency service or whatever number you called. Uh, she realized how stupid it was what she was saying. At some point, it's ah, you know what? I actually don't need the police. Remember, when you call the cops, you call a gun. You're calling a gun to the scene. What is the gun going to do for your cold ass fries, Karen? What is the police going to do for you? Are they going to hold somebody at gunpoint and make them warm your fries up, put them in a microwave, give you a fresh batch? And then you say you've been, this is your second jack in the box? So you just did this, but we got some more information because of my amazing production team. The other woman whose voice you heard on the video has been identified as Elizabeth Cook from St. Louis. Not only is Cook infamous in St. Louis, but around the internet, here's another video. 
If you are a true crime fan and you are not following the Elizabeth Coke Cook, I'm unsure of the pronunciation, story on Facebook, please do yourself a favor and do it. Basically, this girl in St. Louis, Missouri, went to go steal a car from somebody. The owner of the car caught her in the process and I guess she like ran off. But she dropped her phone and he took it. The guy that she was trying to steal from took her phone after she dropped it and kept it. And now he's on all of her social media, her Facebook, everything. And then it's now turned into a huge Facebook group. So this is the name of the group if you want to join it. It is freaking hilarious. We went from finding out this girl is in a theft ring of multiple items in the St. Louis area, cars, other vehicles, uh, other types of items that have been stolen, to potentially finding out she's a part of a murder. Uh, not really sure, but you should follow this. It is well worth your time, I promise you. I mean, they're taking this stuff to a whole nother level. I mean, we have to up our game here at Indisputable uh, because this creature known as Karen is evolving beyond that of uh, regular adaptation. Uh, Waz, what are your thoughts here? You know, it dawned on me why Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Joe and the Dems can't get the Build Back America plan through. They didn't put the warm fries <laughs> on the agenda. If right. you tell the people that their fries are guaranteed to be warm at every single spot from now until eternity, that thing is gonna <laughs> right. sail right. through That'd Congress as if it was the military bill, my brother. That'll do it, all right. <laughs> since, it's, since it's Friday, I got something for everybody. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. I gotta break the news, everybody. We're not on Earth anymore. We're actually in the Twilight Zone. Uh, I don't know when it happened. I'm trying to figure out exactly what day the shift took place, but literally, it happens a little bit before Donald Trump got elected. We have been living in the Twilight Zone. I think she said she was protecting the car uh, because it's her daughter's car, and her daughter's her daughter is at Pilates or something. But I don't know. Anti fries, anti leaves. Was Thoughts. My WWE heads will understand um, that lady needed to get a rock bottom. That that's what would have happened. She would have got rock bottom right into that grass <laughs> in them leaves, and then I would have finished her off with a people's elbow. Look, I don't advocate <laughs> for on, violence, man. but at that a was certain point, self defense has to kick in, Doctor yeah, Richie. That definitely would have been self defense. Yeah, she she would have got a rock bottom. Yeah, this this uh, young lady is outside actually working. 
Uh, you know, when you have leaves, and, job. <laughs> that's your job. When your job is to blow leaves, guess what happens? You blow leaves. And leaves <laughs> actually do, you know, they do move around when you blow them. So that this is, everybody should know this by now. This is the, re, the natural reaction of a leaf blower, right? <laughs> this is what happens when you blow leaves. Leaves blow around. If you don't have good sense to just say, hey, you know what? These people are working here. Let me move my car if you don't want leaves blown on your car. And listen, I, I just got to say it. It's not like you're driving a Bentley, ma'am. Anyway, <laughs> all right. We got more. We got more on the other side. Is indisputable stick and stay. All right. Welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Okay, let's go to some of these amazing comments. We got a lot of them. I will read as many as I can. Uh, TYT member. Raven Mad Cat, I think calling calling 911 without reason is actually illegal. It really is. You're right. Everybody has that at least city ordinance or there's a county or state statute, the misuse of an emergency call number. Um, rarely is it enforced, okay? People typically do not actually get charged with it unless it is egregious. But definitely that seemed to be completely egregious to me. All right. Um, Super chat. A key to boot forever. How was the debate you were the moderator for? I wish I could have seen it, <laughs> it was great. Um, and we may post it, I'm the political analyst for CBS 46 News in Atlanta. So CBS News Atlanta, I serve as their political analyst. And I moderated the Atlanta mayoral debate, which is in a runoff. It's a big, big, big election, all right? So it went great and I think they will probably put that up on the website if they not have if they have not already done so, all right? Um, Twitch, cold food for cold hearted customers, there it is. All right, let me give you an update, okay? There was a man, a black male stumped in the head. He is disabled, he has rods in his legs. He walks around with the cane. Well, what do you know? A cop thought the cane was a gun, it wasn't a gun, still he gets arrested. He's slow getting on the ground, he gets on the ground by some miracle, but he's not moving fast enough. Remember, he's disabled and the cop decided to kick him in the head, busted his head. Now, South Carolina, this is in Orangeburg, they are having to pay $650,000. Here's the video. Give me a description of uh, give me a description of uh, subject. You're not listening, dude. Listen, I'm just slamming my head. Listen, on the cement. Does he need EMS? Yeah, he needs EMS. Go back to your house. 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 Yo, bust my head down, you throw me down. I sure did. Yeah. Let's go. No, it ain't. you ain't had to throw me First down like that. Plan. I'm just a feeling it. Okay. I got the head problem. Yo, you throw me down. Individual uh, head, down. he's been uh, busted. He is a, Yo, bust my head. His uh, head is bleeding a little bit on his forehead. You bust my head down on the seat, man. He was... He was in front of the car, car came out. He was walking like this. And I thought it was a gun at first. I said, drop the gun, 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 drop the Damn near 60 years of age. Let's put up a picture of this clown who calls himself a cop. This is the Orangeburg public safety officer. His name is David Lance. David Lance Dukes, 38 years of age. Um, yeah. Now, that jurisdiction is paying $650,000. Uh, this is a settlement, okay? Dukes has since been fired, okay? <laughs> Uh, the police chief actually retired shortly after this went down. Let me show you a picture 
of the person he assaulted. Uh, his name is Clarence. He was unarmed, he was disabled, he was defenseless, and he was an innocent bystander. He had nothing to do with why the cops were there. Nothing, okay? Um, Gilliard told reporters, every time um, I look in the mirror, I see the scar on my forehead. This is Clarence Gilliard. I see the scar on my forehead and it's not okay. The only thing I want the community to do is change. That's what this man wants, okay? He wants change and I want change too. All right, as I, as I have said many times, was bad cops are expensive to the taxpayer, period. <laughs> Justice was served here. Man got fired, his superior decided to resign cuz i bet you he signed off on some bs report yep about a gun as if what type of cops are we training that you can't tell <laughs> that a stick is not a gun mhm you don't deserve to have that job yeah glad he's cooked yeah he's gone he really should have been arrested uh and after he realized it was not a gun it did not cause him to stop his aggression, even when he realized he's dealing with a disabled man. So obviously he has a cane to walk. It did not cause him to change his course of conduct. I got a question, what in the red state hell? You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face, it's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. Richard Pryor has an album called That <laughs> Crazy. Mike Tyson says the, the N word. He says <laughs> Dave Chappelle says <laughs> Okay, why is it that depending on your race, you can see the word, say the word According to this person, um, this was a white male standing outside of the Kenosha courthouse holding a black crimes matter sign, trying to justify why he uses the N word and why it should be okay for him to use the N word. Let me be very clear if you are white, don't use the N word. I don't give a damn what your black friends may say. I don't care how cool you think you are, just don't do it. And really, you shouldn't want to do it. You should not find refuge, comfort, or connection in utilizing that word and going hard ER. Now, understand the argument. <laughs> and is it is it hypocritical? You may say so, okay? But it's different. Damn it, it is different. It's different. If somebody says uh, the N word, who's a white person, it is different. No matter how you chop it up, this person is trying to justify using it. I would say this man is obviously racist and a provocateur, but that's what he does. Now, does he have the freedom to do so? Yep, and we have the freedom to do exactly what we're doing right here. He wants to be popular and famous, we're gonna help him. Waz, thoughts? You know, black crimes absolutely do matter because when you're black and you commit a crime, you actually get prosecuted yep. for it. They throw the book at you and you know, you have to pay your debt to society. Um, black crime matters in a way that pretty much no other crime in this country <laughs> matters. Um, you know, I, I ask myself sometimes, I'm like, would it be prudent for me to, you know, ask every white person, why do you guys marry your cousins in West Virginia? Mm. Like, how come you can't dance? And why is your potato salad so bad? I don't do that. 
Cuz it's rude, Dr. Richie. Yeah. You don't want to do that to, you know, strangers, your friends. You don't want to bring up these uncomfortable <laughs> subjects. And we choose not to do that because we have cool and we respect people. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely there's a cultural a culture connection. Uh, and listen, the vast majority of black people I know, they don't say the N word at all in any type of format. Uh, but those that do uh, in their informal language, um, I, I get it. Uh, so anyway, this guy obviously wants to be provocative yes, get it. and he wants to uh, be famous and, and I think we've helped him out today. Okay, uh, this is actually a good story, started off bad. But now it's good, all right? There's a Detroit teen who got suspended for cutting hair in the bathroom. This is a young entrepreneur, but he got skills though. He got suspended because this was obviously not a sanctioned activity inside of the school system. Well, he is on his way to becoming an A-list barber. Why? Because after this, his entrepreneur spirit landed him an actual apprenticeship. Now. This all happened at the Renaissance High School. He gets suspended. Cameron Tucker was caught using one of the school's bathrooms as his workspace. I like this kid, by the way, uh, to cut hair of his peers during study hall. Let's put up his picture. Yeah, there he is. Once again, he got skills, okay? In the middle of doing that, the teacher walked in, stared at us for about 45 seconds and walked out. Explained Cameron of the November 11th incident while speaking to Fox 2 Detroit. As a result, Cameron's mother, Cassandra Young, received a call from the school to pick up her son. We need someone to pick up Cameron. He's running a barbershop out of the third floor bathroom, said an administrator in a recorded message, according to WJBK TV Fox 2 Detroit. There's a line in there, hair all over the floor. He's got his whole setup in there, like in the movie Barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, there's a good ending here. Despite being punished, all right, he was suspended by the school. All of the administrators agreed, your man got skills. Like all of the teachers and administrators were like, but he could cut some hair though, all right? Hell, they were probably about to get in that line too. The 16 year old even received an apprenticeship invitation from Sebastian Jackson. Who is that? CEO and founder of Detroit's premier barbershop, the Social Club Grooming Company. That's a big deal. You have become so good at your craft in such a short period of time, Sebastian told the team. Sebastian's barbershop has two locations in the Detroit area, serving clients as former, such as former NBA player Rose and rapper Big Sean. Boom. Look at that, young man is on his way. Was good ending to a not so great beginning here. You know, usually you know it's in poor taste to brag, but I got a fresh lineup <laughs> yesterday. You see the, <laughs> you looking tight, Ooh, man. You're looking tight, Thank big Was. I gotta Dr. tell you, Rishi, every single episode your line is 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 crispy. So I said I gotta come correct this time. Okay, correct. Look at now, you see the waves coming in too. Ooh. Ooh, big Waz, I don't see the I don't see the waves though, Big Waz. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna take it that far. All right, you look good though, brother. You looking good, Waz. All right, my friend, tell people how they can check you out, man, and follow you on social. Uh, make sure you're reading us and um, listening to us on every single podcast at theringer.com. We do pop culture, we do NBA, NFL. Every single sport you can imagine. Um, and of course, follow me on every single social media platform at, at B I G W O S, at Big Waz, every single social. Thank you, big homie. Always a pleasure having you on Indisputable. Let me remind you of Morgan Harper. That's happening today, okay? Tune in live today as attorney, community organizer, and candidate for US Senate Morgan Harper joins the Young Turks Power Panel. Don't miss it. Tune in live 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time, tyt.com forward slash live. Uh, power panel all new this Friday. Today, uh, the Young Turks, we got John Jank, Morgan Harper, that's our one. Uh, and then JR Jank, Jackson White, our two, boom, okay? Don't miss it. Also, right after Indisputable, we got the big homie. Ben Carollo, Galaxy Brain, that's a Twitch exclusive. Make sure you get down with Twitch. 
Beautiful, great, amazing people over there. Twitch.tv forward slash TYT. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.